Good morning and good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Open Education Consortium's quarterly membership meeting. So there's a lot to cover today. Um, we always do, but um, we actually have a lot to show you. So let's take a look at the agenda first. So we have a guest speaker from C Creative Commons, Su Hyun Pei. And I'm going to talk about three activities from the consortium that would need your participation, which would be the call for proposals for the Open Education Global Conference, Open Education Week 2016, Open Education Awards for Excellence Nomination. And then I'm going to go through the membership survey results, followed by briefing on two activities by the consortium, which are the Open Education Information Center and the OECX MOOC project. And again, as usual, we'll open the floor for questions, comments, and discussion items from members. So, first, we have a guest speaker. We've been inviting guest speakers who can show us a glimpse of what they're up to so that we can learn from each other and also find ways to collaborate. Now, Suhyun is from Creative Commons. She is a regional coordinator in the Asia-Pacific region. She'll brief us about the Creative Commons Global Summit that'll take place in October. So, without further ado, Suhyun, it's all yours. Oh, thank you, Mina. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Great. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, uh, it's my pleasure to participate in this call, and I really appreciate this opportunity to, to speak and introduce CC's Global Summit uh, to you guys. Um, first, before I start, um, apologize, apologies for two things. First, um, please understand these ugly slides because I didn't have uh, pro uh, enough time to prepare proper slides for this call. But I hope this, these slides can give you at least the gist of uh, CC Global Summit and its <laughs> information. Thank you. And second, um, um, as uh, Mina might told you before, uh, I have some audio problems. So unfortunately, I cannot hear your voices and might not be able to take your questions. But uh, if you have any questions regarding my talk and Regarding the Global Summit, uh, please contact me at suhyun at creativecommons.org. Yep. <laughs> but sadly, I, again, I have to leave in five or ten minutes. So <laughs> if, you, if I don't have enough time to take your questions, yeah, you can just ask any questions via my email address. So, um, so um, Creative Commons uh, holds this uh, global summit every two years to bring together uh, affiliates around the world and other activists, academics, and experts who promote and advance the cause of the commons, free culture, and open knowledge around the world. Uh, and as you may as some of you may know, um, CC has uh, a vibrant affiliate community and network around the world in more than 80 countries now. And we think this uh, Global Summit is a very important event to uh, boost our energy and promote the value of the commons and openness to the public as well as to affiliate ourselves. So 
Uh, following the previous global summit in Buenos Aires in 2013 and in Warsaw in 2011, this year uh, the global summit will be held in Seoul, South Korea, my home country, from October 14th to October 17th. Um, And the main theme of the Global Summit is Hello Sharing World. Uh, this is like a catchphrase. So this is the theme and there, there is sub-theme for each day. For day one, we have celebration of sharing and for day two, work of sharing and for day three, future of sharing is the sub-theme of each day. And we, uh, frame this event like this because um, we want to give an overview of what CC has done in the past and what CC is doing in collaboration with other open culture uh, communities around the world. And then we want to talk carefully about what kind of future we want to bring. So these are the main themes and the main venue for the Global Summit is the National Museum of Korea, which is located in the center of Seoul. And it's a very beautiful museum and we, we held, actually held the Asia Pacific Regional Meeting a few years ago and also last year at this very building. And there are many uh, speakers from around the world, not only from our affiliates, but also from various fields, uh, academics and activists and other open culture uh, communities, including Yokai Bankler, the Berkman professor at Harvard Law School, who is also the author of a seminal book, The Wealth of Networks. And Lila Tratikov is the exec new executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. And she will be also be one of our uh, keynote speaker on day one. And Julia Reda, uh, a member of the European Parliament. And she is also at the forefront of the EU's copyright law reform movement. And she will be the main keynote speaker of our summit on October 17th. And last but not least, to Ryan Merkley, the CEO of the Creative Commons, of course. And he will uh, give a keynote, special keynote speech on October 16th. Uh, along with Jae Yoon, the project leader of CC Korea, and Professor John uh, Gilam John, uh, who is so called the father of Korea's internet. So there are uh, many more uh, important speakers uh, from CC's global network, and some other uh, representatives of. Uh, open businesses and organizations like TJ Bliss of Hewlett Foundation and uh, Andy Yang, the CEO of uh, 500 Pixel. So they are, they will be there to uh, uh, give short talks or uh, participate in panel discussions. And if you look at the slides, uh, the summit website also provides a uh, schedule of the program. And we uh, use the chat application, which you, some of you are already familiar with. So the program is currently draft and uh, is subject to change. But the organizers of the summit is aiming to uh, lock the program down 
uh, by the end of this month. I know this uh, is very tight schedule, but we hope to uh, make it work. <laughs> And among the uh, sessions, I think most of you are very interested in what kind of OER sessions are going to happen during the summit. And there are mainly three uh, OER related sessions on day one and day two. And on October 15th, there is a short talk by Cable Green, the Director of Global Learning for Creative Commons. Uh, and he will um, give an overview of the global OER movement and CC's role and value there. And this day is sort of a public-facing event. So um, the organizers asked him to uh, briefly talk about the global movement and the status of OER movement and CC's role. Whereas in, on October 17th, there are a lot of uh, panel discussions, workshops, and um, other se seminar style sessions happening on the day. And there are two uh, OER related sessions. One is OER Projects Showcase, which will feature uh, various OER related projects from around the world, including the open education movement in Poland and some other OER showcases like um, um, Dr. Fraz's OER in Arab Worlds and Creative Commons licenses for OER development and adoption and some very specific um, OER cases studies in schools uh, in Australia and some um, education camps in China. And the last one is uh, OER, um, oh, sorry, uh, the last one is OER Mainstream Ming and the Moonshot. This session is um, run by Cable Green. And he will collaborate with many other speakers and participants. Actually, there are several proposers on open education. And the organizers uh, were uh, finding it very hard to uh, include all of these great OER proposers into this program. And so we just decided that um, all the proposer uh, submit all the proposals submitters uh, work together to collaborate in creating one session and this is the result so there will be an uh, open session on education moonshot for 30 minutes and another uh, global OER movement coordination session for 50 minutes. And our Mina Hwang and some other speakers of uh, Korea OER movement community will, will likely be participating in this session as well. Oh, uh, I just saw Igor's questions. So there will be uh, live streaming, but uh, we are currently checking with the uh, venue and facility service provider, and we hope to live stream all of the sessions on day one, which is October 15th, and some keynote speeches on day two, which is October 16th. But again, um, most of the sessions will be recorded and will be uploaded to the Summit website afterwards. Thank you. 
So uh, that's it uh, for me. So if you have any other questions, um, just contact me at my email address, suyeon at tradecommons.org. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll give. Thank okay. you. So thank. Bye. -bye. To Suhyun for giving us, showing us a glimpse of what this wonderful event would look like. So um, I don't know if you remember, but we have been working together with Creative Commons in the past in quite a few um, occasions. For example, the our global conference in 2010 in Hanoi, Vietnam, was also the launch event for Creative Commons Vietnam. So because OER, Open Education, uses Creative Commons as a common license or protocol of sharing. We have been working together with them, and it's really good to see that they're putting a lot of emphasis on education in their global summit also. All right, so next on the agenda is call for proposals, Open Education Global 2016. So we announced in Banff this past April that the 2016 conference will be held in Krakow, Poland, AGH. University of Science and Technology is the local host for the conference. And if you've been coming to our global conferences, which you have been, you will know that our global conferences take place in the most beautiful parts of the world. And their local hosts have been the great, ha they, they show the greatest hospitality. So the theme for the coming conference is convergence through collaboration. You see the call for proposals here. Igor has just put in the link to the website. You can see the five different tracks that we have. But even before you go into the tracks, you'll see that from just from the theme, you'll see that we're trying to bring in together, bring together many different aspects of openness, open access, open education, open source open anything, we would love to see how they can converge, merge into one great effort. Now, the call for proposals are due on November 16th. And again this year, we're, we've partnered with Open Praxis so that if you're interested in publication opportunities, please make sure you specify that that you're interested in having your proposal reviewed by Open Praxis. OK, so next on the agenda is the Open Education Week 2016. Again, you are very familiar with what Open Education Week is like. Next year, it, it'll be in the week of March 7th. It's from March 7th to 11th, and it just is a global celebration of open education. So people whole host webinars, they, they host regional events, um, they submit resources, whatever they can do in open education, they will contribute. Or anybody who's new to open education can come and learn about open education. And this is our request to you today. We're looking for people to participate in the planning group. So if you're interested, please send an email to info at openeducationweek.org. It is a very important event for the consortium to serve the broader open education community. If you have great ideas on how to promote open education around the globe, Please do contact us. So planning group works on organization of events, um, how we can promote these events, etc. 
So some people work on doing um, press releases, blogging, social media. Some would concentrate more on the program aspect of things. Some others on just making things more um, possible in each region by doing outreach work. Yes, you can choose to work by geographical areas. OK, so we move on to the next item, another call for participation, which is the nomination for Open Education Awards for Excellence is now open. So there are three categories for the awards, individual awards, site and course awards, and project awards. If you know of a great individual in the area of open education or a wonderful project, please nominate them for the award. They will be announced at the Open Education Global 2016, and here's the link for nomination. And now that brings us to the membership survey results. So a couple months ago, we had sent out a survey to our member institutions and organizations. And the purpose was to better understand member needs and plan consortium activities around the specified needs. So the turnout was not that great. We had 40 respondents. And yet, the responses that we got, I believe, are quite significant. You'll see what the members are looking for. And here's a snapshot of what they told us. So the first topic that we asked about is how people are using OER. The question was, do faculty at your institution currently use OER within their daily teaching and learning practices? 22 said yes, 18 said no. The next question was, do faculty at your institution currently develop new OER collaboratively with other academics or institutions? 23 said yes, and 17 said no. So that's about the same. So we asked them, so if you are creating these contents collaboratively, do describe what you're doing. And somebody told us that they're adding OER as a part of course reading materials or assignments. Another institution said all their content is OER. And somebody else said their faculty use MOOCs and OCW in their teaching. And some faculty use their OCW courses as an alternative to publishing their materials on the university LMS. So that'll save some time for them each semester. And in another institution, OERs are built into courses by faculty subject matter experts as learning resources. And at another institution, it was a part of course requirement to confirm that they've considered OER as an option for course materials and textbooks. And some were translating materials in their language classes. Now, the second topic we asked about was institutional policies. We asked, does your institution have policies related to open education? 25 said yes, 15 said no. If yes, of those 25, which areas does the policy cover? So for this question, the response we, they could choose multiple answers. And you see that they had policies on open data, open access, open licensing, adoption of OER, such as open textbooks, 
faculty support for OER creation. And the next topic was on MOOCs. We asked, do you consider MOOCs as an open education initiative? 34 said yes, 6 said no. I'm sure you can imagine why we had that no. And then we asked, does your institution offer one or more MOOCs? 21 said yes, 19 said no. If yes, what platform are you using? So it was really interesting how the ones who said they do have a MOOC project going, many were on multiple platforms. And of those platforms, Coursera, edX, and FutureLearn were the most popular. And then there were a couple other options, such as developing their own platform, and we see OECX or um, there are two responses saying OECX. We asked the ones who said no to having a MOOC project. So if no, does your institution plan to start a MOOC in the coming 12 months? 8 said yes, and 11 said no. So having asked those questions, we asked, do you have any comments or thoughts on MOOCs? And some of the comments we got were there was difficulty in joining well-known platforms, probably because of the membership fee and whatnot. They're not ready to tackle sustainability challenge with MOOCs. And one person said, MOOCs will be one of the lasting innovations in open education and online pedagogy in the future. It helps universities to benchmark its quality of services with a prominent university globally. Another person said, MOOCs will serve as an important tool for virtual student mobility. Another response was, encouraging all MOOCs to use open licenses will broaden use of OERs across cultures. There were some negative thoughts on MOOCs as well. Um, this one respondent said, not sure if the MOOC is the long-term solution at this time. You know, there was some concerns about the hype on MOOCs. And this response said, MOOCs have come here to stay, but there's no sustainable business or operational model yet. So you see this mixed ideas and thoughts on MOOCs. So in 2014, um, the Open Education Consortium ran an open MOOC pilot project that allowed OEC members to offer openly licensed MOOCs on the edX platform under the OEC shingle. Now, an OEC X course must be based on existing OERs. If OEC X continues to offer the opportunity, we add would your institution be interested in running an open MOOC as part of OECX? 19 said yes, and 16 still said no. So if you were to offer an open MOOC with OECX, what kind of assistance would you need? You can see that. People thought assistance in using the edX platform was the most important or most needed um, service. Using the edX platform, knowing about best practices in MOOCs, course evaluation, developing MOOC strategy, these were the topics that our members were interested in. And then we went on to the topic of Open Education Week 2015. We asked, did you participate in the 2015 Open Education Week? 26 said yes, 14 said no. If yes, what did you do? Our members 
did a series of web, um, seminars, one each day. Some institutions had even more than a one one workshop a day. They did webinar tour of a site or their open education project. There was the 24-hour Twitter event. There were, there were colloquiums and presentations, participation at a conference related to open education, launching a MOOC in time for Open Education Week, and hosting a competition during Open Education Week to bring awareness in open education. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have materials from the Open Education Week website to promote Open Education Week, so in the form of web banners and posters and slide templates, et cetera. Fifteen have used these promotion materials to increase awareness of Open Education Week. And then our question was, what suggestions do you have to make Open Education Week more effective? So we got comments like, get more people to participate, host a contest, maybe it can be regional, enable submission and events on the website early on. Organizing events by region would be more effective than just having everything all over the world in the globe. Making all presentations downloadable at once would be a great source of resources. More use of social media and blogging would be good. And somebody mentioned maybe we should have a showcase for newcomers so that people are inspired by these cases. So we went, we went on to ask about other consortium activities. We asked about the quarterly membership meeting. Have you participated in an OEC online or quarterly membership meeting? 22 said yes, 18 said no. If yes, what did you like or dislike about the meeting? We only got likes in the comment box. People have mentioned repeatedly that it's good to know current projects of the consortium, and it's good to have updates on what other members are doing. So yesterday, there was another meeting. And we had um, people from MIT presenting on OCW Scholar Program. So when you learn about other people's projects, it does give you certain ideas about what you can also be doing. About the newsletter, do you receive the OEC newsletter? 28 said yes, 12 said no. On professional directory, are you listed in the directory? 21 said yes, 15 said no. So still, we are seeing that we need to promote these activities a lot more to our members. And then we asked about the information center. As we were preparing for the launch of the Information Center, we asked, what kind of information would you like to see in the Open Education Information Center? Um, the, the responses, they could choose multiple times. And we see that, that many people wanted links to slides and presentations on open education. There were more responses saying they, they would like to see forums, community news, presentation templates, information on starting an open education project, maybe a central location for tools and apps, case studies, and FAQs. So we're going to talk about the information center a little, a little later on today. We'll see that um, the survey results were reflected in the information center. And this was our last question on the consortium activities. We asked, please indicate if you're interested in participating in any of the following initiatives and activities. Many showed interest in marketing and messaging on the value of openness. So this shows that we really have to utilize our member base more 
in order to increase awareness for open education. And some others showed interest in open education week planning group, outreach to businesses, the global conference program committee, improving discoverability of resources, and open education for lifelong learning. So we have members who are interested in jumping in to consortium initiatives and activities. So that's the summary of our membership survey. We've got two more things that I will very quickly zip through, and then we can open the floor for questions. So the Open Education Information Center I'm sure you've seen this by now. Um, the information is organized in a way that it addresses different audience groups, such as faculty, students, administrator, researchers, and policymakers. When you go into a subject topic, a topic of interest, you will see that the information is organized in question and answer format with links to other resources that explain or that get, provide further information on the question. What's most important about the Open Education Information Center is that this is a community effort. So you will see the Submit and Info button wherever you go. On every page, there is Submit Info button. If you know of really good um, video, a deck of slides, just good resources on open education, please submit it, submit it to the Information Center. And then you can see the Open Education Events page. There's a calendar for events. And there is a forum, which is not, we, we haven't really started using the forum yet, but you know that it's, it is to come. It will um, have community news, um, forums for question and answer, etc. So that was the information center. And the last to brief you guys on is the OECX MOOC project. Yesterday, Una briefed on this because Una was in charge of this project. Now, the reason we started this OECX MOOC project is because we wanted to transform open content, open courseware, into massive open online courses to increase access and reduce cost. We worked with edX, and they were the ones to issue verified certificates. And we had two questions in mind when we started this project. The first was how can we how can reusing OCW make MOOC development more cost effective? Second is how can reusing OCW increase collaboration opportunities? So with these two research goals, we were funded by the Hewlett Foundation to start this project. And in the pilot phase, we had nine courses, nine MOOCs from universities in Taiwan, U US, Spain, UK, India, Japan, and a community college in the state. And the average enrollment was 30 to 50 students. Courses were in engineering, um, business, sciences, teacher education. Um, they were on various topics. So after having completed these nine courses, we came up with support tiers. It turns out that even when you have your open courseware ready to be used in your MOOC, 
it takes a lot of effort into designing the course, into just making sense out of all the courseware that you have. So there are three tiers. The first one is the new OECX developer. This is for somebody who only have open courseware, OER courses, who somebody who wants to do MOOCs for the first time. For this tier, there will be up to 60 hours of support. And the preparation time period will be anywhere between six to nine months. We will provide instructional design review and some platform support. And the second tier is new MOOCs by current OECX developer, which we figure would need about up to 30 hours of support in three to six months. Again, instructional design review and limited platform support will be provided. And the last tier would be a rerun on existing OECX MOOC. Now, OEC, um, edX platform is quite strong, but it gets updated at least twice a year. So if you want to rerun a course, even though you've got the same materials, you're going to have to rethink your course design, et cetera, the interface. Many things change. So in this case, there will be about between 10 to 15 hours of technical support in the period of three to four months, and maybe 10% or less modification to the original MOOC they had. So if you're interested in creating a, an OECX course, contact Una um, Daly at her email. You can see her email address at the bottom of the slide. And Edmundo vouches for the fact that Una's been giving great support to the OECX um, project. <laughs> but, um, so the ones who participated in the project. OK, so that's all the information that I needed to depart for today. So the last part of the, the meeting is questions, comments, discussion items from you guys. Yeah, Una worked really hard at it, too. So all of you guys have speaking rights, which means as long as you click on the microphone button on top menu bar, you should be able to speak. If you would rather ask questions in the chat window, that's fine too. Any questions? <laughs> okay. No. Okay, for now, Una has all the data, all the interview results, et cetera. So she plans to roll out a report on it this sometime this fall. And of course, it will be made available on the website and we'll announce it through social media. If you're interested in, in the raw data, um, do contact Una. Yes, I think so, too. We'll try our best to 
get the word out on in the information center. So when we launched the Open Education Information Center, we had told everybody that it is still in the beta version. And we haven't done you know, the official, official launch of it yet. Um, we were waiting to revamp the information a little more. But in the meantime, I'll make sure that you'll hear, you hear about it in our social media more. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, good idea. I'll ask members to help us to promote stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just like calculated. <laughs> yeah, we smoke a little bit. And I have prima. You have a local period of first day, okay? Okay, any other questions? Comments? Okay. Now, I, I actually was expecting a lot more questions on the OECX MOOC project. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. OK. All right, so our last slide is how to get in touch with us more on social media. So if you don't know about them, get to know them now. Thank you.